Hey guys, uh, so I'm going to show you something that I used to do all the time in XSI and how to do that in Houdini. And that is to, uh, what I did, I was always taking uh, the closest location uh, in the modeling stack and I was saving that location and I was using it later in the simulation to do different things with my points, my particles. So here I'm just using, uh, I'm just taking the position of that location. To, to follow this deforming geometry. But you could, of, of course, it's not just point positions that you can pick up. Like you can also take the point normals from that location and maybe do this randomize and uh, do a little offset. So here, if you look at that, that would be something like this. And you could do other cool things too, like take colors or orientation or whatever. So how do you do that in Houdini then? Uh, let's see. So let's go over to Houdini. Um, so I have something similar here. I have, I have this. Oh, I'm just gonna click there. Uh, I have this uh, deforming sphere. So it's a sphere. I have a mountain sub, which is just noise. So, and I've animated that noise. So you have this, this deforming geometry, and I'm taking. I painted on this geometry to scatter some points, and then I'm using this copy sub, to to put a sphere on every point. So, how are we going to do it here then? So we could do it in a simulation context, like in a DOP sim, that would be in Houdini. Uh, but I prefer to do it in SOP. The SOP is basic like the modeling stack in XSI. Uh, so, the first thing we do, because I need to set it on the first frame, so I need to have a way to take the, the geometry and read it how it is on frame one. And you can use do that by using a time shift. So here is the time shift. Uh, on default is updating every frame. I'm gonna delete that. So I'm deleting that. So now it says frame one, and don't. So if we look at that, we can see that on every frame it's just showing frame one of this geometry. So and then I'm gonna drop down an attribute vop attribute vop. So here is that. So what? Do I want to do? I want to update the positions. So I'm gonna take my my points in the first slot. Uh, I want to update with the deforming geometry. So I'm gonna put that into the second slot, and then I want to use. I need to use this uh, first frame geo, so I so I can set the locations. So I'm gonna put that in the third slot. So let's go in here and see what we can do. So in here, uh, we can first drop down an X Y Z. And that is basically the same thing as get closest location in XSI. So you have an input where you put in your geometry positions, like your points positions, and from that you get a distance, and you get the primitive, that is the polygon, and the prim UV, so the UV location of that polygon. So, so we want to sample the first first frame then, and that so that would be the the third slot. Where I put that geometry in, so I'm gonna put that into the input, uh, and I'm gonna take the point position. So, so now I have, so now I basically have a location. So how do I read that location? I do that with a primitive attribute. So here's a primitive attribute, uh, and I want to have the deforming geometry, which is in slot two, uh, and. I also want to have know what polygon I'm going to read from, so in, put that into the primitive, and the location UV location. So put that into the UV, and as default you can see is reading CD, which is color as attribute. But I want to read the position, so I'm going to put the P here, uh, and then I'm going to take this. I have this vector, and I'm going to put that into position. So here I'm setting my points. That are going into the slot one. So, so if we go out now, and then I gotta plug this into this cup up here. So I get this sphere updated, and then I'm gonna look at the final result, and voila! We have the points that updates on this deforming geometry. So yeah, that's how you do it.